Yeah. I want to become a world class facilitator in raising the consciousness of women and men about their true nature. Cool. I want to become a world class facilitator in raising the consciousness of women and men about their true nature. I'm going to have two books establishing men's and women's circles all around the US and all over the world. I'm going to have two books establishing men's and women's circles in the US and all over the world. And teach new rituals for men and women to know themselves and storytelling within in the next two years. And I've got a feeling you just made this up on the spot right now. Am I wrong? No, just kidding. I know you've had this dream for a while. That's awesome. It's clear. It's clear even thinking about it. I'm glad you know your goals. And what's yours behind you? Cool. I will definitely call me. No, I will build a $100 million business within five years. And I would become a successful social entre entrepreneur who will contribute to ending extreme poverty in the world within 30 years. And the next 30 years, you can end moderate poverty. That would be awesome. So I was saying, my, my friends who really are billionaires, what they did is they made a five-year plan. They spend like, a lot of time making this five-year plan. And they'll write down exactly what they need to do, how much money it'll cost, what the risks and liabilities are, and they'll really, they'll really map it out really specifically. At the end of every year, they'll go back to the plan and adjust it for new contingencies and new experiences they've had. So if you guys have really big goals, literally write out your five-year plan and make it as detailed as possible with the costs and you know, anything that can go wrong as well at the liabilities. Let's do two more because these are really, what a cool group. Way in the back with the black hair. I will become a public speaker who will transform the lives of children and teenagers this year. And end divorce within the USA within 50 years. <laughs> I want to see how I can do that, but that's awesome. <laughs> but you're, are you going to end it by outlawing divorce? <laughs> okay. Well, that, that, yeah, go ahead. I will become a director who will direct the film version of the game within three years. Spyglass Entertainment. Contact Spyglass. They don't have a director yet, man, if that's you. That's awesome. Cool. I like that. You know what? Three years for Hollywood is pretty quick. <laughs> well, let's do one more because these are cool learning, learning things. Let's do one more. Awesome, yeah. I'll become a man of great value to others in your business. Cool. You want to make that a little, he said, I will become a man of great value to others. You want to define that. What's your role? In other words, the, hey, there, what's your name? If I says, hey, that's Gary. He's a man of great value to others. What would they call you? Like, what is, the, what is your, what would your role be? You know, how are you, what, how are you going to give them value? Your corporation. Cool. Do you mind saying, in, in general, so what, what is your role, your title, in other words? Cool, looking for a business that will be beneficial to others. So I'd, I would advise, advise figuring out what that thing is concretely, not just in terms of your business goals, but also in terms of women too, because if a girl's actually talking to you, right away you sound cagey. When you can't define that, it sounds like a little cagey. This guy, what does he do? I don't really know what he does. He kind of has these goals. You know? So figure out what that role is. You could say Samaritan. That's a word if you're going to be that. You could say entrepreneur if you could be an entre entrepreneur. But something, you know, they can hang, a peg they can hang some clothing on. Cool? Do you know what it is right now, offhand? Cool, maintaining environmental. Cool, an environmentalist, let's say. Cool, awesome. Yeah, a vi environmentalist entrepreneur. Would that work for you, an environmentalist entrepreneur? Who will what? Yeah, who will maintain the qualities, like what you just said. I will become an environmentalist entrepreneur who will maintain the qualities. And what else did you say? Maintain qualities. So maintain the qualities of the areas where people are threatened by groundwater and keeping people healthy. What a fucking difference that is. Like when you were saying that other thing, I'm like, okay, next if I was, you know. But when you say I'm going to become an environmental entrepreneur who will, you know, maintain the standards of people's local environments so they're not getting health hazards and where they live by groundwaters and other things, that's powerful. That's such a difference, man. Really cool. Thanks. Hey, Neil. Yeah. Can I step on your exercise? Uh, uh, sure. Step all over it. You sounded really sure about that. Yeah. Um, turn to the person next to you, 30 seconds each. Tell them what you're going to do and when. Awesome. Go. That, that wasn't stepping. That was raising it. Thank you.
Well, everybody wants to do it. Everybody's putting their hands up, and it's like, let's let them get it out. Awesome. You know, that's awesome. Thank you. All right, we got two more left. We'll race them really quickly. This one's really important. The, the uh, second A is for authenticity. This means that who you present yourself to be on the outside is who you are on the inside. You know when girls meet a guy and they're like, that guy was kind of weird or I don't really trust him or he's a little bit creepy or, or whatever, usually it means that they weren't authentic. It means that they were trying to be really nice on the outside, but inside you know they hate women or hate themselves. So it's the idea, people also call it congruence. It's the idea of being congruent. It's so important as you learn this. If you go out and you try to be someone else, you try to be one, you know, you try to be David, you try to be Brent, you try to be Lance, you try to be one of the other speakers, uh, you're not being you and you're not being congruent. You know, the whole goal of this thing is to go find out what's best about you and bring that forth and outside. And if you don't know what's best about you, it's finding that and bringing that forth and outside. Like Joseph Campbell says, follow your bliss. So you really want to be congruent in how you present yourself, and it's so important that the guys who come off as creepy, it's because they're not authentic. And, you know, and someone who's authentic is someone when you're smiling, it's because you really are happy and because you really like yourself and who you are. And most importantly, it's, and it's real life has contradictions. So in other words, if you want to convey strength and you're always being strong or you want to be valued or always showing them incredible things, you know, real life has contradictions and that's okay. It's, it's accepting, part of being authentic is, is accepting your imperfections because they make you human and who you are. You know, nobody in this world is perfect. When, when you describe someone who, who's kind of interesting, you're like, oh yeah, he's that guy with like the, the bump in his nose. Or he's that guy who, who's always laid with that funny way of walking. And we say those things because they're lovable. What makes you imperfect often is what make, makes you lovable. So you can't try to be perfect because no one is perfect. So it's accepting your imperfections makes you authentic. And, 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 and embracing them, but at the same time always working to improve yourself. And having dualities or contradictions, what makes someone real? In other words, if uh, maybe a con artist or someone, what makes someone real is when they show both sides of themselves. So having dualities or contradictions are the clues by, where, by which we know something is real. I did this, I studied, did a story where I was with these like government psychics who would teach you how to be psychic. They called it remote viewing. And you knew when you were getting like the proper remote viewing information is when it had contradictions. If it was too clean and fit a pattern, then you actually knew it was wrong. So it's okay to have these, these compl contradictions and complications make you more rich as a person. So we'll do a quick uh, little exercise, which is, does, does everyone, I want you to look at the person next to you or the person you've been working with and rate them on one to 10 for congruence. In other words, is the way they're dressing, the way they're presenting themselves, is that who you feel they really are? Or do you feel like they're hiding something? So give them a, rate them on one to 10, and if you can, give them a tip for, for, uh, for improving it. So look for authenticity. How authentic are you? The person you're interacting with, are there any walls up? Are they trying to be something they're not? So it looks like, looking around the room, you all do seem like authentic guys, but that's in your interactions with us. Because we're all here, we're letting down our guard, we're being ourselves, because that's how we're going to learn. If you're in here being inauthentic or trying to be cool, like you're obviously wasting your time anyway, because who are you trying to impress? So just be, mon be conscious of this in your interactions with women. Be, try and be conscious of if you're being congruent in your in interactions with your friends. Don't try to be something you're not. If you want to be something you're not, you know, work, 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 work on, um, you know, work on your core inner value of who you are. Figure out why you're not that person or why you don't have that goal, why you're not confident, whatever it is. And there is that whole fake it till you make it attitude. There's something I noticed, which is, and this leads us to the next thing. I'll tell you what, we'll just get to it. The S is for self-worth. And probably what this whole seminar has been about in a lot of ways. So many of my problems had to do with worthiness. In the past, when I really, like, would go through, like, really long dry spells of like years without like having sex, which is a horrible thing to experience. It wasn't that like other women weren't attracted to me. Like I, when I look back on it, there were women who were giving me signals, but because I didn't have self-worth and I didn't feel I was like worthy of being someone like that, I just figured she was like that with every other guy. And there's a guy named Zan in the book. Who, did Zan speak here? There's a guy named Zan who's, who's, who's in the game and, and, is, a, and is a great guy. And, and he says, he always assumes with everybody that it's on. He already assumes, why wouldn't they like me? Why would they not like you guys? Like, you guys are all interesting guys. Your friends know you're cool. Why would she not like you? Start off from that point of view. So, you know, self-worth is the idea of, uh, of all, all the, is, is the, and also not just having self-worth yourself, but conveying self-worth. All the, the, a lot of what, uh, what David D. teaches is high-status behavior. Cocky funny is someone who has self-worth. 
Self-deprecating is someone who doesn't. Non-neediness is self-worth. Lack of desperation is. Not being able to take up space in the world. Some people walk around the world like they're about to be like hit or mugged or run over or something. Just moving confidently like you own your space. Uh, having a sense of worthiness. Uh, you know, having opinions and sticking to them. Some of these go, go, go with strength. You know, even if they conflict with her. So to me, this is like an important piece. And here's, it's interesting. Because before I found all this kind of treasury of knowledge, people would say, I'd ask for help all the time, and they'd say, just be confident. And really, like, how, when someone says be confident, it's like when someone says relax, it's like, how do you just be confident? It's like saying, like, be Canadian. Like, how do you do that? <laughs> you know? But you can be Canadian if you go to Canada and you live there for a little while, you can be Canadian. So it's the same thing with confidence. Um, success breeds confidence. So don't beat yourself up if you're not confident. You know what you do is you go do everything you've learned. And, and to me, like the whole thing of the whole game was like the shallowest path to confidence possible because I, once these kind of beautiful women would like be comfortable enough with me to like take off their clothes and do things to my naked body, I, I thought I must be worth something. You know what I mean? I, they, I'm, they, they can be with me. I must be okay. And then eventually, in a very shallow way, I had enough success and success bred confidence. So at a, we'll eventually get to a point. It's an awesome place to be where you say no to women, where you, where you actually turn them down because you have good women in your life. Or really that's not the kind of person who you want to be with because there are things that you, you might not like about her, you might not connect with her on. And that really is, is conveying a sense of confidence. So um, here's what I want you to do. An interesting exercise. Do this. I want you each to rate your own confidence on a scale of 1 to 10. Your own confidence on a scale of 1 to 10. Good question, just in general. <laughs> Your own confidence on a scale of 1 to 10. Cool, now turn, just turn that page over or cover it up after you've written it. This is going to be really interesting, okay? And I want you guys to be really, really honest when you do it. I want you to turn to the neighbor you're working with and now rate their confidence on a scale of 1 to 10. I want you guys, do not be generous. I notice you hear you guys giving numbers sometimes and you're really being generous. Okay, be brutally honest. Your first one to 10 on their confidence, give your neighbor one to 10, and when they're done, compare what they thought your confidence was with what you thought it was. We'll see how congruent you are. Afterward, get one pointer from them on how to improve your confidence. So get their rating and see how it matches your own. Uh, who wants to tell me how they did? How'd, uh, how'd you guys do in the, in, the white, in the white shirt? How'd you guys do right there? All right, guys, come back. How'd you guys do? Tell me, your, tell me your numbers. You rate yourself a what? A six, and what did he rate you? you? You rate yourself a six, and he rated you a what? A six, so both six. And what about you? You rate yourself a six, and what did he rate you? A seven, cool. And what thing can he do to improve his confidence? What's that? Go to seminars like this, cool, and how about him? What's that? Go out and do it? Cool. How about, how about just projecting, projecting and speaking with more confidence? That would help because you're, you know, you're a good-looking guy and taking up more space and speaking with a little more confidence, standing up straighter and knowing, like, own your words when you say them because you look like a confident guy and then when you're kind of saying these things, you're kind of quiet, they're mumbling, you're not sure if they're right. Own your words. If you're going to speak your words, own them. Cool. Um, how, about you two, how about you two in the back uh, in the white shirt? Yeah, you, yeah the guy's looking around. One, uh, Black shirt, white shirt. You both are wearing black shirts, white shirts. We'll do both of you guys. I mean, not do you, but answer, get your questions answered. <laughs> Six? Cool. Interesting. And vice versa? Six and six. So what, what were you? He rated himself a six. He rated him a five. Okay. Awesome. And what can he do to improve his confidence? Yeah, become a little, yeah, projecting your energy on, become more, I really did, I really do notice that, that I can tell whether a guy will do good with women right away by their energy level. And it doesn't matter how good looking they are, how they're dressed, anything, it's, if you're projecting energy out that's positive, you make other people feel good about themse themselves. It's so important, it doesn't matter what you say. People just want to feel good. And how about you guys right in front? Uh, yeah, right by the guy behind you, that's cut pair behind you. He, so you rated yourself a seven and he rated you an eight? Cool, and how about you? 
same thing. Cool. What can each other do to improve your confidence? More presence. More presence. Good. Yeah, step outside, step outside your comfort zone. So you ended that statement as a question. Step outside your comfort zone. Don't be afraid to do that. Like, really, I, did you guys, a couple quick stories and we'll wrap things up. Did anyone see the MySpace videos I did? Yeah. Anyone see them? I'm going to tell you about them really quickly. It's an interesting lesson. I wish I could have showed them. Damn it. I should have brought them. But it's on my MySpace page. It's just myspace.com slash Neil Strauss. They're up there for free. You don't have to become my friend to see them or anything. And here's what I did. Um, they wanted me to, like, teach guys lessons about doing this stuff on MySpace. And I thought, no one wants to, viral video, wants to watch a viral video that's teaching you things. So I thought, what I'll do instead is there's a, a, a guy named uh, Hypnotica, um, who I first met at David D's first seminar. And he said that he used to go out to get confidence. He put, like, strapped a dildo to his forehead, wore a women's dress, didn't shower for two weeks, and would go out and approach women. And he said, if you can do this, you will never have approach anxiety again. <laughs> so I thought, let's put it to the test. Um, and I had a... Um, uh, David Faustino is a reader of the game. He was Bud Bundy and Married with Children. I said, why don't we do co a competition? And every week we had a new competition. We had him and a guy named Corey Nemec who was on a show called Parker Lewis Can't Lose. I figured two child stars, it'll even the odds. And so what he did is he put a dildo on his head and went out to meet women, kind of using the techniques we've all discussed, versus Corin, just a good-looking guy, not using any, anything that we've learned. And with a dildo on his head, he actually met women and got phone numbers. Like, and they didn't even ask about the dildo. It was the weirdest thing. <laughs> <laughs> like he was that congruent with it. He's just like, I'm, the, you know, he would just walk up and they didn't say a word. And he even did better because he was kind of standing out. And, and it blew my mind. And I, I recently hung out. He's still, one of the girls was this Russian girl who he's still dating. So every week I decided to make it hard. And we had seven weeks of them. Week seven, I thought, I'm going to make this really challenging. Um, to make sure he's not recognizable, he has to kind of wear a, he a, a beret pulled over his head. But that wasn't the important thing. What was important is he had to do it bound and gagged. So hands tied, duct tape over his mouth, go get phone numbers. He got three out of four phone numbers bound and gagged. <laughs> and he's not, I'm going to say, you know, with all respect to him, he's not very good at the game. He doesn't have a lot of women in his life. He's not a natural player. Nobody, anyone, no one recognized him because he was really un unrecognizable. Three out of four phone numbers. And what he did, just so you guys know, is he wrote like the letters on his sort of hands, like the, uh, like the Daft Punk video for Harder, Stronger. Um, he, wrote the, he wrote the lines on his hand and on his arms and like on his belly. Like he had them write their phone numbers on his belly. And people did it. So he was congruent about asking this stuff. He wasn't worried. He was in his own reality. He was the, I think knowing he was in a challenge made him more confident. So you guys who are scared to approach things, make things a fun game with your friend. So who, who can be the first to get a hand massage from a girl? Can you say meow three times in the opener and still, you know, and still open? Whatever it is, make it a, that's funny, right? Make it a fun game with your friend. Then you can let go of your outcome. So I'll tell you what we did for the eighth video, and, and don't try this. I thought, what would no person in their right head ever do? What would no woman, no thinking person ever do. And I thought, well, what they would probably never do is on a dark, rainy night in L.A., get into a windowless white van with a guy wearing a ski mask. <laughs> 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 and so, so I had David Faustino go out in a ski mask in a, one of those creepy windowless white vans where you imagine like power tools and like meat hooks in the back <laughs> on a dark, rainy night in L.A., and women got into the van. <laughs> like their, they should, their parents should be ashamed of themselves. But it just shows that if you have a strong reality, you're confident, you're congruent, like anything can happen. You can make anything happen. <laughs> so I don't advise doing that. And I guess I'll leave you guys with the last word. And this has been fun. I hope you guys have gotten something out of it. I hope in these Las Vegas qualities that you guys go through and whatever you're lacking the most in, whatever you're rated the lowest in in these Las Vegas qualities, make that your goal over the next month to work on that quality. Don't forget in six months to email your buddy and make sure he's doing his sort of uh, adventurous goal that's going to make him... Uh, you know, more versatile and more, um, and, oh yeah, and I'm going to leave you with two last little bits of advice. I, some, sometimes, like, you get these maxims that pop in your head and you think they might be useful to someone. One is, just because you're interacting doesn't mean you're attracting. A lot of guys go out, you learn this stuff, and you get to interact and talk to women, but don't get stuck on interacting and make it feel that, you know, it's, it's a great goal if you're not normally interacting, but just because you're interacting and talking to them doesn't mean you're attracting. Sometimes you have to push yourself out of your comfort zone to get attraction going. You have to push, pull. You have to step back. You have to sort of give her mixed messages, all these great things that trigger attraction. Don't get stuck there. And um, the last maxim I'll leave you with, it's a quote from Wayne Gretzky that someone shared with me once, and I think it's really great. And I think this is like my motivation when I go out. Everything I do in life, whether it comes to approaching a woman or women or someone ha gives me a call and asks me if they want to do something, uh, you know, go out to a club tonight, go to a, a salsa dancing class, learn how to fly a plane, go skydiving. 
His quote is, and especially it's true when approaching women, we miss 100% of the shots we don't take. You know, if you don't approach, there's a 100% chance that you're not going to interact with that girl. And no matter who you are and where you're at right now in your game, your odds are going to be better by approaching. So go out there and do it. I hope you guys had got a lot of this seminar. It's been fun, guys.